I'm gonna keep it real. There are too many programming languages. Yep, I said it, there are too many. But in this video, we're talking about what languages you should learn and in what order and how so that you can learn to program as fast as possible. As the world becomes increasingly more technological, every job posting that I see requires or prefers some amount of programming knowledge to be useful in that job. If you're a new programmer, it's obvious that getting into this field is increasingly more frustrating. There are more resources available. There's also more information that can clutter your brain and kind of make you confused as to where you should start. And for a new programmer, it may feel like there are just too many new languages to choose from between Go, Rust, Python, C++, Carbon, to name a few. It's hard to decide on a language to learn to figure out how to program in the first place. In this video, we're going to choose two languages and one method to get after programming in the most efficient way that we can. Step one, if you want to learn to program, the first thing you should do is learn how computers work. And the best language to do that is through using C. And I know you may be thinking, oh, low level learning, C is dead. No one codes in C anymore. I don't want to hear it first of all. But second of all, coding in C is the best way to learn how the underlying structure of your computer works. That'll make you a more efficient programmer in the long run as you understand how memory works at a low level, how the registers work at a low level, how your processor is even put together or how it does the magical thing that it does. Don't forget guys, we literally took rocks and shot lightning into them and said, hey, look, now it thinks, oops, that we have to figure out what that does where we can control it. C is a language that scares a lot of people, and there's good reason for that. It's really hard to do anything in C without making your program crash, but that has beauty that comes with it too. In C, there's no guesswork. You know exactly what your program is going to do, and that'll get us a good understanding of under the hood how every program works regardless of if it's java c python or rust we will know exactly what is happening beneath the hood use c to learn how computers work write some programs crash some programs see what you can and can't do because programming languages like c give you absolute control over your computer and then also you can learn how the operating system works you can learn how the linux kernel works how the windows kernel works Exposing yourself to those APIs, those system call interfaces that the kernel exposes, allows you to learn how computers work at an extremely low level. So step one, learn how computers work using C. Now that you've learned how computers work, now you need to actually learn how to program. And what do I mean by that? Typically, if you think of a computer science class, you're gonna learn how to do different data structures, different sorting algorithms, and different things of that sort that will make you a computer scientist. What I don't want you to do is learn how to do those things in C. A person who is new to C will try to implement a binary tree in C and will probably spend most of the time learning how to not make their C program crash, not how to dereference a null pointer instead of learning how a binary tree actually functions. Once you've learned through C how computers work, use an interpreted language. And in this video, I will suggest use Python to learn how to actually program. If you don't know what Python is, Python is a scripted interpreted language that is interpreted via the Python interpreter. The syntax of Python reads like English, and you can then use Python to learn how to actually do the underlying tasks that a programmer is required to do. Python is extremely user-friendly. Once you learn the syntax, using the language to do simple things is a walk in the park. Python is also great because of all of the library support that they have. If you want to do networking, there's a library for that. If you want to do threading, there's a library for that. If you want to print Texas as an ASCII plot, there's a library for that. Finally, if you want to learn to program, you need to understand this one thing. When learning to program, you need to be okay with making mistakes. If you're completely new to programming, you're going to mess up. It's going to happen, guaranteed. But that's okay, as long as you fail forward. Failing forward is the idea of taking mistakes that you've made in the past, learning from them, and moving on. I call them micro experiments. Try a new thing, see how it goes, take that experience and learn from it, and now you've grown as a person. When you wanna go learn C, try to use pointers. Program crashes, why did it crash? Okay, take that. Now you're a better programmer from failing. That's awesome. In my opinion, the worst thing you could do is give up because you're bad. You're gonna be bad. You're gonna make mistakes and that's completely okay. As long as you acknowledge that your mistakes are short lived and you can take those mistakes and move on, I think you're gonna be all right. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. You should go watch this video here on pointers or go watch this video here on how Starlink got hacked. They're both pretty cool. See you guys next time.